Hello my friends, Thomas with Alpha Concepts. Yes, you can have a short barrel rifle in Illinois and I'm going to tell you exactly how in this video. There are nine steps to getting a short barrel rifle in Illinois and I'm going to tell you those steps in just a second. Then we're going to expand on those steps. I'll go into greater detail uh, so that uh, you understand each step and also uh, we're going to talk about how the Illinois assault weapon ban might affect the type of short barrel rifle that you can own in Illinois. Uh, so the first step that we have to talk about uh, to getting the short barrel rifle in Illinois is uh, you're going to have to either get a CNR license, with, which is called a Curio and Relic license. That is a federal license for collectors. Um, that is not required at the federal level. It is required at the Illinois level. So either you get a CNR license or you join a nationally recognized reenactment group. There are some limitations that we'll talk about later on in the video if you join uh, the reenactment group. The second step is decide if you want to build or buy your short barreled rifle because the process is different. Uh, if you're going to buy then the gun store is going to help you out with, with a lot of the, uh, the paperwork but if you're going to build it yourself uh, which is a pretty simple thing to do, uh, then that's a separate process as well. Assuming that you're going to uh, build the short-barreled rifle, what most people will do is actually the third step, buy something that can be easily converted. Um, this way you don't have to build it all from scratch, you can actually buy something that might be considered a pistol variant that you later convert. Obviously the uh, ATF has a recent ruling about pistol variants, uh, that kind of does throw a, a corkscrew into the mix, but that's also why the uh, topic of short barrel rifles is so popular right now uh, all across the entire nation was because of the recent uh, ATF ruling. After you decide if you want to build or buy, uh, you're going to need to get fingerprints. That's required either way. Uh, so we have uh, on our website, we have all of these steps, but we also have links uh, to where you can get the fingerprints done. If you want to do your fingerprints yourself, uh, what kind of uh, ink and materials you're going to need. But you definitely will need fingerprints whether you decide to build or buy. If you're going to build, you're going to go apply for the federal uh, e-form one. Uh, those links are on our website. Uh, if you're going to buy, you're going to do the federal e-form 4. Uh, again, the, uh, the dealer that uh, sells you the uh, short barrel rifle will help you out with the e-form 4. But again, if you're going to build e-form 1, the links uh, for that form as well as a step-by-step -step how to fill it out is on our website. Then you have a, a requirement to notify the chief law enforcement officer where you reside. If you're in a city or a town, uh, that's going to be your police chief. It's just a notification. You send them a letter. Um, if it's uh, a county, you notify your sheriff. You don't need approval. You just need to notify them that you are applying for a short barrel rifle. And the next step is to wait. So after you've uh, filled out the Form 1 or the Form 4, you're going to have to wait. Now, in November of 22, when I originally put together the article about uh, how to get the short barrel rifle, the wait time for the Form 1 was about two to four months. Uh, everyone I talked to uh, that went the Form 4 route to buy, the wait time was significantly longer. Uh, part of the reason people chose to go uh, the Form 1 route. But now with the uh, ATF amnesty, their trap uh, that they're doing right now, tricking people into registering their firearms, so many people are going the route uh, of uh, registering their SBRs that I, I expect a significant increase in that wait time. It's much, very likely you're gonna be waiting much longer than uh, two to four months. That that's just speculation, time will tell, but like I said, back in November of 22, it was a two to four month wait time, so now you have to wait. And assuming you're building, you're going to have to engrave your receiver. If you're buying, the engravings will already be on the receiver when you purchase, when you take possession, but if you're building, you have to engrave your receiver. And there are some very specific requirements that the ATF requires. Those requirements are on our website. You want to get that uh, taken care of by a professional who knows exactly what they're doing uh, and specializes in, uh, in, in receiver engraving. And we have a link to some of those vendors on our website as well. And then the final step, once your tax stamp is approved, 
you can build and do the final assembly on that short-barreled rifle. Don't do it sooner. You'd be a felon. Wait for the tax stamp to come through. If you're going through the process, you might as well wait until you get the final approval. Uh, it's going to take some time. We know that. Uh, but those are the nine steps that is required if you want to comply with the ATF and the Illinois law uh, for legally owning a short-barreled rifle in Illinois. Now let's dig more into this and really let's identify exactly what is a short barrel rifle, when they became legal, and a little bit more information about each of the steps. And then we're going to talk about the uh, assault weapon ban and how that might be affecting uh, the type of short barrel rifle you can own. I always say being a law-abiding gun owner is like tiptoeing through a minefield with all these steps and these hurdles and these bureaucratic processes that they put in front of us. Uh, certainly that's uh, definitely in, uh, on display when we talk about short-barreled rifles. Um, at some point in time, it seems reasonable that law-abiding gun owners are going to stop abiding by the law either accidentally uh, or on purpose. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous the amount of hurdles. But uh, we're going to have to uh, just uh, identify all of these hurdles for you so that uh, assuming you want to comply with the law, you know exactly what you need to do. So first, we got to uh, identify what is a short-barreled rifle. The ATF definition of short-barreled rifle is a firearm, a rifle that has a barrel less than 16 inches in length. Illinois also identifies a short barrel rifle as a rifle that has a barrel less than 16 inches in length and an overall length less than 26 inches. And that's why most commercial rifles have a barrel length of 16 and a half inches or longer. Uh, 16 and a half inches seems kind of a weird length, but that's because federal law. Illinois legalized short barreled rifles in 2013 with the passage of Public Act 097-0. 0936. Um, if we read the criminal code, the criminal code will say specifically that short barrel rifles are illegal, but then later also has the exemption. And the exemption reads, subsection 24-1A7 does not apply to or affect any of the following. A person possessing a rifle with a barrel or barrels less than 16 inches in length if the person has been issued a curio and relic license from the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, or the person is an active member of a bona fide nationally recognized military enactment group and the modification is required and necessary to accurately portray the weapon for historical reenactment purposes. The reenactor is in possession of a valid and current reenactment group membership credential and the overall length of the weapon as modified is not less than 26 inches. So like I said, Illinois adds that one additional step and when we identify and we read that law, you can see why most people choose to go the C and R route. If you go the C and R route, uh, you don't have the restriction of the period era correct uh, um, firearm. Uh, it doesn't restrict you to the type of short barreled rifle that you can have. So assuming you're going the CNR route, the requirements are that you are 21 years of age and you are a legal resident of the United States. You have no felonies and no drug convictions uh, and no restraining orders. You're going to then uh, fill out the application. Again, we have the CNR application linked on our website. That link is in the description. Uh, you can go directly to uh, our website and download all the forms that you're going to need. Uh, you'll go ahead and uh, complete that uh, application, the CNR application. Um, there are some very specific steps on the application that we go through on the website. Be sure that you're marking collector. That's one of the steps. Uh, on question nine, a possible answer uh, to uh, question nine is that simply a, the, the ask for the reason or the purpose, and you'll say to collect. A, cur a collector of curio and relics is the purpose. Uh, read through everything very, very specifically uh, when you're filling out any federal form. Like I said, we have all the directions on our website with the links and everything else. Definitely take a look at that. 
If you choose to go the reenactor route, then you better make sure that the group that you join is a nationally bona fide recognized reenactor group. I do recall that the Illinois State Rifle Association did claim that they met this requirement, but you definitely uh, want to verify that. Uh, one of the other groups that I came up with in an internet search was the 1st Marine Division Korean War Reenactor Group. Uh, that was the most recent, uh, the most modern, because remember, if you go the route of the reenactor, you are limited to period uh, era uh, correct firearms. So as I said, definitely double check, but the two I came up with was the ISRA and the uh, 1st Marine Division Korean War Reenactor Group. All right, after you've gone through the uh, Illinois steps of getting that CNR or joining the reenactment reenactment group, then you can go through the uh, the federal steps, which, as we said, is either the Form 1 or the Form 4. The Form 4 is if you buy, your gun store can help you out with that. The Form 1, we have the uh, links on our website uh, and step-by-step -step instructions. But basically, you're going to link over to the uh, ATF website. You're going to create a user account there. It's a free account. The ATF is going to email you a username. That's how they verify uh, that you're using a proper email address is they email your username. And then you can log in and you can go through the entire process step by step. Um, so like I said, link over to our website, look at the, the process step by step, uh, and it's going to walk you through all of the details there. The ATF uh, say that they require you with, as part of the Form 1 to upload a passport style photograph, 2 inches by 2 inches. Uh, and when we go to the State Department website, we can see their requirements, a, a light colored background, head and shoulders, like I said, 2 inches by 2 inches. All of those requirements are on the website to walk you through everything that you need to know. But photographs are required for the Form 1. If you're buying, you're going to want to find an SOT dealer. There are SOT dealers in the state of Illinois, a Class 3 SOT dealer, not to be confused with an 03 FFL. They are different. I know it can be confusing. Uh, there are a list of those 03 dealers that uh, deal with uh, these uh, short-barreled rifles that are legally able to sell you these short-barreled rifles. Uh, two people that come off the top of head, uh, North Shore Sportsman in Lake Forest, Illinois, and BAT Arms in Plano, Illinois. I have additional uh, SOT dealers on our website, uh, but those are guys that I know personally, uh, and I have no problem referring business to them. If you are building, then you have to have your receiver specifically engraved and you want to deal with uh, engravers that understand the federal requirements for engraving receivers. Again, we have a list on our website, but BAT Arms, uh, which who I previously mentioned uh, as being an SOT dealer, is also an engraver. So they can help you out either way. In addition, we have Creos Engraving. They're another Illinois engraver that does a lot of uh, uh, firearm work, uh, law weapons, and Naperville is another. Like I said, we do have a list of engravers on our website, so check that out. So fingerprints are required uh, as when you're filling out the Form 1. Uh, the fingerprints have to be done on the FBI fingerprint card. Uh, you can do it yourself or you might be able to go to a local police department. You can order those fingerprint cards. We have links on our website. If you're going to do it yourself, you're going to need the fingerprint kit. We also have links for those kits on our website as well. You're going to then need to send in those fingerprints. Uh, now, when you send them in, uh, the ATF gives specific mailing instructions. I have not verified, but I have heard rumor that you can actually upload the fingerprints as part of the eForm 1. So that's not something that I know for 100% to be fact, but it is something that someone told me they did do. So it's something you might want to look into because it could significantly speed up the uh, processing time. Check it out. Contact the ATF. They didn't reply. They're so backed up. I've, I've asked them some questions about this topic as well as some other topics, and I haven't received any replies. Uh, so I'm not saying you should upload the fingerprints. I'm saying some people told me you can. Uh, if you're worried about it, the ATF does give specific mailing instructions. Uh, those mailing instructions, the address, everything is up on our website. 
You are required to notify the chief law enforcement officer where you reside. If you call 911 and you get the police, it would be the chief of that police department. If you call 911 and you get the sheriffs, it would be your county sheriff. I am not encouraging anyone to call 911 just to find this out. You might create some problems for yourself when the cops show up at your house. But the bottom line is if you live in an incorporated municipality, you have a police department, you notify your chief law enforcement officer the chief of police if you live in an unincorporated area you have the sheriffs and you notify your sheriff it is a notification you do not need approval you just need notification so all you do is you print out a copy of the form one and you send it in that's it what about gun trusts? If you've done any research into NFA items, that is National Firearm Act items, which includes machine guns, short barrel rifles, short barrel shotguns, and sound suppressors, uh, you may have heard about gun trusts. Now, only uh, the only NFA item that Illinois allows is the short barrel rifle. We can't have machine guns, we can't have sound suppressors, we can't have short barrel shotguns. And Illinois specifically does not allow gun trusts. Uh, so while there are some definite benefits to a gun trust outside of Illinois, uh, you can't have a gun trust within Illinois for purposes of a short barreled rifle. All right, so now let's talk about how the Illinois assault weapon ban that passed on January 10th, 2023 might be affecting uh, your uh, privilege, shall we say, to own a uh, short barreled rifle. Uh, all of these hoops that we have to jump through. Uh, Illinois recently passed the assault weapon ban that says you can't possess, manufacture, import, uh, purchase uh, any of these scary black rifles. So can you have a short barreled rifle in Illinois? Yes. Is it going to be a gimpy short barreled rifle? Possibly. I want you to understand that everything I'm going to say from this point forward is pure speculation. This is all brand new. I was speaking to uh, an FFL who said that he was on a webinar with the ATF and the ATF said that they are not going to approve any tax stamps in Illinois. That sounds crazy to me because you can make an SBR that can meet the AWB requirements. You know, chop down granddaddy's uh, bolt action rifle, uh, sporterize it, and next thing you know, that's a SBR and bolt actions are exempt. Now, I can understand why the ATF might not approve uh, uh, an AK or an AR SBR, it really is going to come up to them. Are you manufacturing when you turn that pistol into a rifle or are you converting? We're going to have to see what they think about that. Uh, I do know a number of people have applied for the Form 1. So we're going to find out real quick here what the ATF thinks. I'm just saying don't be surprised if you're trying to register uh, an AR or an AK variant short barreled rifle that was a pistol and you're converting it to a rifle, short barreled rifle, don't be surprised if the ATF does not approve that tax stamp. It's going to come down to do they consider that manufacturing if you already owned it. Certainly we know you're not going to be able to buy. Okay, it's not, you're not going to be able to buy an AR and AK variant type scary black rifle, short barreled rifle. We know that. You're not going to be able to build from parts. We know that. The question remains though, is will you be able to convert a pistol that you already own into a short barreled rifle and only time will tell. I want you to leave a comment and let me know your personal experience. Uh, not a friend said this, a friend said that. Did you get approved or denied after January 10th for a short barreled rifle? I would definitely love to hear it. I want you to leave a comment if you have firsthand experience. If you have any questions, I want you to leave a comment, definitely. But I also want you to check out the website because I go into a ton of detail, more than I can in this video. It'd be an hour long video. There's so much detail, I'd just be reading off of a script. Uh, I didn't want to do that. So I want you to check out the website and then, like I said, if you have any questions, leave a comment either on the website or here uh, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Uh, everything up to the assault weapon ban, I know to be for a fact. I'm speculating about the assault weapon ban and how the ATF will or will not approve. Uh, also, just a quick update about the assault weapon ban. We are watching very closely. Um, 
We do know that one federal judge did not issue the uh, temporary uh, restraining order. Um, we do know that state judges have issued temporary restraining orders. We do know that there are multiple lawsuits looming on the federal level, and we are actually expecting a favorable decision coming out of the Southern uh, District uh, probably the first week of March. So wait and see, I guess is kind of the, the approach that I would personally take. Um, if I was to register a short-barreled rifle, I'd kind of wait and see how the court case shakes out. This whole $200 tax stamp amnesty from the ATF, in my personal opinion, is just a trap to get people to voluntarily register their firearms. Um, you can do it or not, it's up to you. Uh, the bottom line is, is we do know that this is a temporary amnesty. Uh, when the amnesty goes away, if you want to register into a short-barreled rifle, it's 200 bucks. It was 200 bucks before the amnesty, it's gonna be 200 hundred bucks after the amnesty. Um, I also believe that the uh, we have federal court uh, cases challenging uh, the new pistol brace ruling. Uh, and I do believe that pistol brace ruling is going to be ruled unconstitutional as well. And you can put your braces back on your pistols. They don't have to be SBRs. I think the government knows that. And I think that that's why they're giving the amnesty is to convince as many people as possible to register as quickly as possible before the pistol brace ruling is ruled unconstitutional. I'm just speculating. That's my personal opinion. I could be right, I could be wrong. I'd love to hear your opinion on the subject. Uh, all of this is crazy nonsense, all these hoops that we have to jump through for nonviolent gun owners, but it is what it is. If you found this video helpful at all in any way whatsoever, I'm gonna ask you for two favors, please. Number one, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. My analytics show 90% of our viewers aren't subscribers and that's crazy to me. Please, if you found this video helpful, do subscribe and share it on other social media for your friends as well. They might find it helpful too. That's all I ask. If you want to support this channel, the number one way to do that is to sign up for one of our firearm training classes. If you're looking for a beginner pistol class, concealed carry, defensive pistol, if you're looking for a shotgun training, we can definitely help you out. We also offer non-lethal pepper spray uh, classes and soon we will be offering security classes. Uh, I hope that will happen by the end of the year we are in the process of waiting approval from the Illinois state government for the security officer classes so uh, we are a professional training agency you can't go wrong if you sign up with Alpha Concepts as always everybody be armed be trained be alpha I'll see you in the next video thank you